Many of you may recall Robert Frost's poem, A Road Less Travelled. In fact, many of our speakers today use the imagery associated with a fork in the road and the implications of our choices. So Robert Frost wrote this 100 years ago, but I think we can reasonably say it still resonates truly to us about the implications of the decisions we make across our life. I particularly want to focus on the decisions that young people make as college students to have a global experience. Now, I should premise this by saying only about 2.5% of American college students actually get an opportunity to study away. So on one level, you might say that means all experiences are tremendous, and they are. But I want to challenge young people to be more purposeful about the deep engagement that's possible with global experiences. And I want to start by contrasting a couple of programs we have at Concordia. And in fact, one of our most popular programs is at the University of the Sunshine Coast in the country I come from. And somewhere in the audience is a young woman who went to this program last year. And it's in a beautiful part of sunny Queensland. There's great beaches. There's tremendous opportunities. It looks like a lot of fun. At the other end of the spectrum, I want to contrast a program we started last year in India. Now, India does face endemic problems with corruption, poverty, a caste system that locks many out of the opportunity for economic development, massive pollution, crumbling infrastructure. Our students are given a unique opportunity to work with entrepreneurs who are bringing about social and economic change. But the question I have is, which would you choose? This is actually a group of students, and again, somewhere here is Matt Gantz, and Matt is one of the young men who is at that program. Now, why there's overwhelming evidence that deep global engagement has the chance to be life-changing? The reality is, for many students, the option they're going to choose is based in a tourist location. They're going to take courses very similar to the courses they take in their own home institutions. They're going to meet people mainly like themselves and spend very little time with people different from their own experience. And their lasting memories are actually photos from the holiday. So my challenge to students is how do we inspire them to be purposeful, to take risks, and to step outside their comfort zone? Now, I don't want to bemoan young people having fun, but I do want to challenge them to think about where they're going and the implications of that choice, the fork in the road. Currently, when you look at the experience of US students in study abroad, 55% of American students go to Europe. And overwhelmingly, that's the UK, Spain, France, and Italy. About 10% of students go to what we call the BRIC nations. And less than half of those go to Brazil, to India, to Russia, and to South Africa and only 2.5% of students actually go to North Africa and the Middle East. And you only have to turn on the news to know how much that part of the world is actually shaping our global security. The good news is the millennial generation, this generation of college students, are actually predisposed to deep global engagement. Now, if you're a parent of a millennial, you'll have complaints about their need for instant gratification, their short attention span, their obsessive multitasking, particularly with electronic devices, even though you ask how many damn things can you have on at once. <laughs> but on the upside, in numerous studies, we find that they crave meaningful work, they seek opportunities for collaboration, they value diversity, they embrace global perspectives, and they are open to new experiences, all which predisposes them to deep global engagement. So why am I so passionate about global engagement? Like many people who've been on the stage today, it's because of my personal experience. Now, to this day, I do not know why my parents let me, as a 16-year-old, travel unaccompanied through Southeast Asia. <laughs> Honestly. And the reason was they had no idea what the world was like. So that is me. Luckily, it's an old photo, and I looked worse than the photo. Um, I was skinny. And, but what I was doing is I was in a, a village in Indonesia that had virtually no signs of modernity. It had a, a communal life that bore no resemblance to my experience. I spent time in Malaysia in predominantly Muslim communities where the tradition of evening prayer, again, 
unrelated to my experience. As a 21-year-old, I had an opportunity to backpack through the UK and through Europe. This, this photo is of a typical open market that you still find across the continent. I experienced communities that had rich traditions, they were tied to their history and their culture, they had values and norms very different from my own, and they had traditions that shaped their understanding of each other and their connections to the world. As a 20, early 20s, I had an opportunity to work in a remote Aboriginal community uh, about 500 miles away from the ultra-modern city of Perth. In fact, Don talked a little bit about some of the challenges for Indigenous people around the world, and Aboriginal Australians face many of those challenges. The average life expectancy for Aboriginal men is 20 years less than for white Australians. Aboriginal people make up 3% of the Australian population and over 28% of the prison population. The group I worked with were young people who had been uh, had faced difficulties associated with collapse in their communities. One of the young women in this photo had burns over 50% of her body because a drunken uncle had thrown her into a fire. In the late 90s, my wife Angela and I had a chance to work in, in China. At the end of that, we got a chance to do some travelling around. We went to a province which is called Yunnan in the southwest. And why I've included this photo is, this is basic commerce. We needed to get across a lake, a very big lake, and the fishermen could take us there, but we had no language in common. So all the negotiations occurred with hand gestures and by writing in our fingers in the sand. Also, we should never ignore the fact that connecting ourselves to the natural world is very important. Peter had mentioned how we need to understand that world. Now, a few years ago, Angela and I had a chance to go into the, basically the centre of northern Sumatra and we had a close contact with a group of families of orangutans. Now, most of us have seen orangutans in zoos. The chance to get into the deep forest and, and look eye to eye with another creature like an orangutan is quite remarkable. So I'm passionate about deep global engagement because most of the people up here have said the same thing. It profoundly affects your life. And at the end of the day, as an educationalist, I believe my job is essentially to rock the world of my students. <laughs> so our program in India meets the highest standards of that experience. First of all, students outside their traditional classroom, they're immersed deeply in what's happening in the world. This is just a photo of a group of school children that we met and if you can see the faces in those young people, they represent the, ethic, the, the ethical the challenges that go with educating vast numbers of people from different kinds of perspectives. Also, our students get a chance to engage with people wrestling with complex issues. They work with a series of cooperatives that work with women, with the untouchable caste and with the disabled. This young woman in this photo, as a five-year-old, was married off to a much older man. Before she could move to his family, which I assume would happen about 13, he died, which made her a widow and with no chance for economic opportunity. The cooperative that she works with and our students work with gives her a chance to create a life for herself. At its core is the need to understand. And the benefit of listening to others and seeing through their perspective is very important. One little aside to this photo, just there you'll see a guy who's actually the instructor for that program. I know it's only a little bit of his face and he's got bare feet. Does anyone recognise who that is? Greg. Greg. Do you recognise the big feet? Was that the giveaway? <laughs> so yes, we're very fortunate to have Fargo's own Greg Trevine as the instructor. He spends part of the year there working with entrepreneurs on the other side of the world. Lastly, a very important part of this is frustration and ambiguity. This is just a standard day of traffic in Bangalore. In fact, I've been in Sundays where the traffic is as bad as that. Our students, within about two weeks of arriving, go on an overnight train trip. And in that train trip, they're often delayed for many, many hours. They sleep on bunks that are about that wide. When you go to the bathroom, you'll see there's a very big hole, and that is actually the track down below, and a sign says, please don't go to the toilet at the station. Somewhat obvious reasons. Um, and they learn, and we're in the best carriages. We're in second class or whatever it is. So the need to be frustrated, to understand ambiguity, and to live in others' shoes is very important. 
So this is the challenge, and this is a challenge for all of us. How do we actually encourage our students to think about opportunities like India and not just opportunities like Queensland? And I'm not in any way diminishing the wonderful opportunities that happen in many other settings. And I think there's two things we can do. First of all, we can model deep engagement here in Fargo-Moorhead. All of us have neighbours who are from Somalia, who are from Iraq, who are from uh, Laos and other communities that we need to get to know. Apparently there's another country and it's closer than Minneapolis. I think it's called Canada. <laughs> and I say that jokingly because I bet you many of you haven't been to Canada. Um, we need to rediscover our connections to the natural world as Peter indicated. And very importantly, we've got to stop liking other people's experiences on Facebook. We actually have to do something that rocks our world. And as a last point, when you get a chance to influence someone's decision, a student who's planning to study away, please encourage them to be daring you might just inspire them to take the path less travelled. I shall be telling you this with a sigh. Somewhere, ages and ages hence, two roads diverge in a wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. Thank you very much.